everybody, this is Cody Albright, the Conservation Manager for Breck Outdoor Adventure and Extreme Sports. I'm here today at lovely Greenwood Community Park in Baker, Louisiana, at our boathouse. And we are going to talk to you today about some of the paddling locations that Breck offers. Obviously behind me, we have the beautiful lake at Greenwood. Uh, during the summer, we operate a boathouse during June and July where you can come here and rent kayaks, paddle boards, canoes, uh, and enjoy your time on the water here. Uh, we also have at Wampold Memorial Park, we have a boat launch which accesses the LSU Lakes and that's awesome for a quick paddle or you can go out for hours at a time. It's a really great park to go enjoy. And then we also have a boat launch built at Highland Road Park which accesses Bayou Fountain and you have access to up to 10 miles of paddling. Our friends at Paddle BR have done a beautiful job uh, labeling mileage along that bayou and it's just a great opportunity to get out and see some unique uh, unique nature that we have access to in our park system. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the aspects of paddling. And the first thing we're going to focus on is our safety. And the best thing about being safe in the water is making sure you stay on top of it with what we like to call a PFD, personal flotation device, or a life jacket. So what I'm going to do real quick to show you all how to properly fit them so in the event that you end up in the water uh, that you're staying on top instead of going under. So as you can see our PFD here it's like a jacket or a really cool vest so you're just gonna throw it on like so and then you're gonna have your buckles here in front and you just want to buckle all the way down so every jacket has a different amount this one has three buckles and then from there you're just gonna cinch each one of your buckles down and you want it to be snug enough that you feel like somebody that you really love is giving you a hug but you still want to want to be able to breathe okay so once you've got it on feels nice and loving what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab these here and you're gonna pull them up and what this is going to tell me is if it's going above my ears, the life jacket is too loose. But if whenever I pull in the shoulders, it stops at about my ears, it lets me know, hey Cody, it's just tight enough. If it goes too high, you can cinch it down a little bit more. Or you can have a super friend come along and tug on it for you and give you a better idea. And that is how you properly fit a life jacket. things after you get into the boat which we know is a place of fear and trepidation for a lot of people is once you're here and you're nice and cozy you got your backrest set uh, it's gonna be your position of your hands on the paddle and how you move the paddle in the water so the first thing you want to do is basically put your arm straight out in front of you at shoulder width and that's approximately where you're gonna want to grab the paddle it's a nice starting position for you uh, sometimes we'll see people grip really close, which whenever they paddle it doesn't give them a lot of power, or they get really out wide and it can be kind of difficult to maneuver. So, hands about shoulder width on the paddle. You want the paddle blades facing up and down. And from there what you want to do is you just want to reach forward with whatever side you're going to paddle on, and then just pull and rotate back. hand position on our paddle when we're out in the water. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the duration of your paddle stroke. So a lot of times we see people they go, oh I keep my boat keeps turning to the left or my boat keeps turning to the right. And what that usually means is you're either paddling too strong on one side or too light. And so whenever you're reaching forward with that paddle, usually you want to come back and about the time the paddle gets to your hip, that's whenever you want to stop your stroke. Uh, if, you're one of the, if you're somebody that's paddling back past their body, that's going to make you turn more powerfully to one side. Or if you're paddle, paddling shallowly or like just a little touch, that's going to make you not turn as much. Uh, so make sure, paddle forward, pull, and stop your paddle stroke at your hip, and uh, that's going to help you maintain a straighter path on the water. hand position on the 
paddle, uh, stroke length. The other thing that we get is a lot of people get in a boat and maybe they've never kayaked before and they go, well, hey, which direction is uh, this thing gonna move whenever I make this particular movement with my body or my paddle? And the thing you wanna know about canoes or kayaks is that everything is in opposites. So, your left, my right, since you're watching this video, whenever I paddle forward, my boat is gonna turn left whenever I paddle forward on my right side, okay? Whenever I paddle forward on my left, the boat's gonna turn to my right. And that's why when we're paddling, we go back and forth, and that's what helps keep the boat going straight. So just remember, hands shoulder width apart, paddle stroke back to your hip, and when you paddle on the right, the boat's gonna go left, when you paddle on the left, the boat's gonna go right. And then once you get really comfortable with that, you can do cool stuff, you can make your boat go 360. And then the next thing you know, you'll be ready for the next games. to you guys about hand positioning for kayak paddles uh, and some of the different different techniques that we use to guide our boats forward. So we're also just going to cover canoe paddles and stand up uh, paddleboard paddles. So all the concepts that we've already talked about apply. So if you're paddling on the right side, your canoe in this case or paddleboard is going to turn to the left. If you are paddling on the left side, your canoe or paddleboard is going to turn to the right. So those same concepts apply. Uh, the difference is with a canoe paddle or stand-up paddleboard paddle, we only have a one-bladed paddle, which means we just have this one blade, okay? So the things that we want to remember for our canoe and stand-up paddleboard paddles is you want to have, once again, arms about shoulder width apart, but when you go to paddle, you really want to focus on pulling with your back muscles and not your arms. So we see a lot of people doing this, and they get really tired, and they're not really going far. So the thing you want to focus on is when you put that blade into the water, and then you're going to pull back like so, almost kind of rotating your body. And then once the paddle gets to your hip, then you can bend the arms and bring it out. So here, pull like so. If you're a lefty like me, And what that is going to do is it's going to utilize the larger muscles. It's going to allow you to stay out on the water for a longer period of time, travel a further distance, and hopefully have more fun. Okay, everybody, I wanted to just say thank you for uh, watching our videos that we've done on hiking and paddling. And it wouldn't be an outdoor adventure program without a joke. So I know paddling gets people excited. Make sure that you're always holding your paddle safely with both hands. Otherwise, you might hit one of your paddling buddies and give them summer teeth, which is not good. It means it's summer in their mouth and summer in the boat. We don't want that, okay? So come back, check out Breck Outdoor Adventure, check out the Breck Refresh page. We're gonna have constant content coming to you all uh, from all the different offerings we have and stay tuned.